Those of you who regularly watch my channel know that I have quite a few games of Tani Atawumi on this channel, including a couple of games where he beat Nakamura in Blitz online. Uh, but this game is a norm tournament in New York City. This is a classical time control. This is serious chess. And Tani Atawumi, as you probably know, has dreams of becoming a grandmaster and even more. And in this game, in a classical game, he goes up against Grandmaster Mark Paragua. And I'll just tell you ahead of time, this game is messy. There are mistakes, uh, quite a few. But one of the reasons there are so many mistakes is because the game is so chaotic. Tani really likes these sort of crazy, highly tactical positions. And this leads to really a very fun game, even if flawed. I think you're going to be very entertained by it. Let's begin. Grandmaster Paragua has white. Tani Atawumi has black. Let's go. E4, C5, Knight F3. E6 is played by Tani. This can lead him to a con or time on off Sicilian. The open Sicilian is played, and we have a time on off. And this is the main line. Basically, it's like an English attack. The traditional approach for white is to play queen d2, then f3, g4, and castle long in that way. That's sort of the main idea here for, for white. a6 is played, but now a3. This is a diversion from the normal pattern of queen to d2. Uh, a3 basically keeps this bishop from pinning on b4, which can become very annoying after queen to, queen to d2, and is a main idea uh, for black. Uh, knight f6 was played. Um, if bishop to c5, you can just wreck the pawn structure. Uh, so knight to f6 is played, applying pressure to e4. And now f4. This is a much more, I would say, directly aggressive move than the queen to d2 idea. The idea is maybe play e5, take advantage of the pawn of the square weakness, excuse me, at d6, and if black castles king side to play g4, g5 very, very quickly. d6 is played to help control that e5 square. Now queen to f3, clearing the back rank and preparing for long castling. Bishop e7, and now Grandmaster Paragua castles long. Tani Atawumi castles short, and we have a classic. Sicilian opposite sides castling position. So already we know we're probably going to see some very exciting chess with a, a clear result, a win or a loss for one side, and not a draw. And uh, and that definitely happens in this game. Knight takes c6 is played. Uh, one of the reasons why it does that is because this knight can create trouble. Maybe you can go to a5 and c4. Uh, it helps control the e5 square. So white just goes ahead and takes it off now. But when the pawn recaptures, you see that this center from black controls a lot of key squares. So that's the one downside. And there's also potential for play down the B file. G4, the grandmaster, begins immediately attacking Tani's king, threatening G5, gaining space. Rook to B8, the half open file. G5, knight to D7, H4. So now the pawn avalanche is coming. And... Uh, Tani's going to have to be prepared for it. He's going to have to find a way to put pressure on this king. D5, expanding in the center. Counterattack in the center with your opponent attacks on the wing. H5, continuing. And now queen to A5. And you see there's a lot of weaknesses on the, this dark square, these dark squares. Bishop to, takes A3, is threatened. There could be sacrifices on B2. All kinds of pressure. Taking advantage of this early A3 move that the Grandmaster played. Bishop to F2, that clears the third rank so the queen can defend perhaps along that rank and now f5 is played and this is actually the novelty in the position this position had been reached before uh, but this is the novelty hoping to lock up the king side and keep white from being able to have mobile pawns uh, if e5 it, it would really give black free play on the queen side and be very hard for white to generate any attack because he could always close lines on the king side if he needed to. Uh, so in this case, ed5 is played, cd5, and now queen to e2, immediately aiming at the e6 pawn, threatening to take with check. And here Tani plays a very aggressive move. He says, I don't care about the e6 pawn or that being with check. I'm going after my opponent's king. And this is really the way he plays chess. Rook takes b2, an unbelievably powerful sacrifice. and. Uh, Obviously, if he takes, then he could be in a lot of trouble very, very quickly with the other the queen coming down here. Just all kinds of uh, problems. Uh, queen takes e6 check was played first. 
because Tani has to respond to the check. Rook to f7 blocks the check. And now bishop to d4. Um, if g6, let's say, taking advantage of the pinned rook, then black would play queen takes knight with an immediate threat on c2. And after queen takes rook with check, king h8, uh, there's no back rank mates because black can always block on the f8 square with the knight or bishop. If bishop d3, rook takes c2 check. Bishop c2, now bishop to a3 check coming in on those dark squares. After king b1, uh, queen to b2 is mate. If instead he goes ahead and takes the rook here, then bishop to a3 leads to mate very quickly on b2. So bishop to d4, defending the knight and also keeping pressure on g7 is a very strong move that was played. Uh, bishop takes a3. Uh, rook to b6 was apparently a strong uh, move as well, maybe even stronger. Bishop to a3, setting up a discovered check on the king at c1. So the king moves out of the way and goes to d2. Queen to b4. It's the bishop at d4. And now queen to d5. Uh, apparently king to e3, defending this bishop that way and just trying to maybe <laughs> move the king over to safety on the king side was, uh, was the best idea. Uh, but queen takes d5. It's played bishop to b7. Now this bishop is skewering the queen and the rook, so the queen goes to c4. Now, the reason he can allow this rook to hang is because of all of the pressure on this rook on f7. Uh, if, say, queen c4, just bishop takes c4, and if bishop h1, g6, now this rook will fall, and white is doing fine. Uh, and if bishop h1, you can just go g6 immediately, play it that way. So Tani plays queen to d6. He doesn't want to trade queens. He wants to continue his attack. White's king is in the center of the board. Now g6. And uh, there's no doubt about it. White's better here. White is just winning. And white is winning for most of this game. Uh, most of the game. And uh, g6, obviously the rook is still pinned by the queen. hg6, hg6. If queen to g6, then rook to g1. So the bishop at d4 defends that g1 square, and white comes crashing in and would just be completely winning. So Tani plays queen to f4 check. He wants to flush out the king. Bishop to e3 blocks the check. Now queen to d6, aiming at the king, so blocking with bishop to d3. And now queen to g6. And this move now works because the bishop is not on d4 anymore. And after rook to g1, he wouldn't be capturing on g7 after that because the bishop's not there. So now queen to g6 uh, works. But rook d to g1, uh, a very strong move. Queen h4 would have been very powerful, threatening mate on h8. And if queen g2, bishop to e2, and white would be just winning in that case. But rook d to g1, and white's position is formidable. Uh, these two rooks align on the G and H file, the pin on the rook on F7, and Tani is really going to have to calculate accurately to have any chance of surviving this game. Uh, queen to F6 was played. The best move computers show us is actually knight to E5, hitting the queen, and after rook takes queen, knight takes queen, bishop C4, uh, this position is actually uh, equal, uh, believe it or not. The reason it's equal, by the way, is uh, white is attacking this rook, but the rook on h1 is also attacked, so that's why the position is equal. But queen to f6 is played by Tani. Now rook to h6, a brilliant move by Grandmaster Paragua. I mean, the best move on the board. Hits the queen. It can't be taken because of the pin down the g-file. And uh, the Grandmaster is in very good shape here. The queen moves to e7, and now rook h to g6. It turns out bishop to d4 was very strong and would have been uh, completely winning. Rook h to g6, king to f8 to step out of this pin along the g file. But now bishop to g5, hitting the queen, and queen to b4, looking to... Now he wants to exchange queens. He didn't want to earlier, but now he does because white has a lot of pressure on, uh, on black's position. The queen goes to c7, and from here, the grandmaster is threatening queen to d8 checkmate. That is a mate, so Tani has to do something about that. So he moves the king over to g8. So he has this flight square on h7. Bishop c4 was played. It turns out there was a brilliancy opportunity here. Computer show bishop to f6 
would have been crushing in on the g7 square. But bishop c4 renews the pin. So Tani essentially is in a position where he has to just, you know, check and go after white's king. He's got to take any chance he can. So he plays rook takes c2 check, king c2, queen b2 check. And here the winning line for white is king to d1. And it doesn't look like that's the move you want to play. Uh, the reason it wins is because after bishop f3 check, king e1, queen takes knight check, then bishop d2, queen e5, the queens are exchanged, uh, but then rook takes g7 check, and the rook can't capture because the pin is still there. And in this position, white would, would win. But he plays the move that feels a, a little safer to him, actually, and that's king to d3. Uh, but that actually throws away the win, and now Tani is very much back in the game. Uh, the best move here was actually bishop to e4 check. After king d4, bishop to c5 check. You give up the queen, but then rook g7, king g7, bishop c1 check, wins the queen back. And uh, here, I think white has probably a slight advantage, but uh, it's very much a playable position. So knight to c5 check was played in the game after king to d3. King to d4, knight to b3 check. Bishop takes b3, queen b3. The queen comes back to c4. Uh, now white wants the exchange of queens to keep going back and forth as to who the exchange of queens favors. Queen to c2. Now rook to g7 check. King g7. So this is the critical moment. And I will confess, this does leave a bit of a sour taste regarding this game. Uh, the grandmaster does have a win right here. And that winning move is bishop to h6 check. And the reason that wins, the main line, is after King takes his queen e6 check after king h7, and mate would be played. Um, but he played a move that looks just as good, perhaps, uh, but is inferior. He plays bishop to f6 check, and now the game does a complete 180. King f8, and now white's king on d4 is in greater danger than black's king on f8. Bishop to g5, rook to d7 check, king e5, queen to h2 check. Hitting the king, hitting the rook at g1, and after bishop f4, queen g1, now Tani has a decisive material advantage. If he can stave off any final mating attack against his own king, he will win. After bishop h6 check, king to e8, and he resigned. You notice the queen has control of this square, so there's no check, and. Uh, this would very quickly just be an easy win for Black. So a dramatic game, a big win for Tani. We won't kid ourselves that this was a masterpiece. It wasn't, but it's still historically important, I think, for Tani Adewumi to have a win against a grandmaster. And I have heard now that he's gotten his third IM norm. So he's living his dream and getting very close to becoming a grandmaster himself. I think in the next few years he's going to do it. Uh, thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. Now, if you want to see another great game from Tani Atawumi, be sure to check out this video right here. I think you're going to like it. Goodbye.